humans have one large occipital bone in the back of their skulls. The early vertebrates did not. Instead, there was a large number of bones uh, in the occipital region of the skull. Uh, some were lost, uh, some would end up supporting uh, the ear, the, so the stapes would become a middle ear bone, as would two bones from uh, the jaw, the quadrant, and the articular. But many uh, bones would then fuse to become the one solid occipital bone. This would include some elements from the chondrocranium, which would include the basio-occipital, the exo-occipitals, the supraoccipitals, and then also some elements from the dermatocranium, such as the postparietals, which would fuse to make the interparietal, and then also the small tabular and supratemporal bones. These all fuse to make the one single occipital. Humans have one single temporal bone. It composes the zygomatic arch for jaw muscles and thus the synapsid opening for jaw muscles. It holds the middle ear inside of it and is a, is a very complex bone. It forms from all three parts of the skull. The splanchnocranium contributes the quadrate and articular from the early jaws which will migrate and become inner ear bones or middle ear bones. The uh, second arch produces the styloid process and the stapes, which becomes a middle ear bone. Uh, and the chondrocranium contributes the petrosal bone, which comes from two separate otic uh, regions and a mastoid process. The dermatocranium contributes the squamosal bone and the angular bone from the jaw, which goes to the middle ear. And all of these together combine to make the one single temporal bone in humans. Humans also have one single sphenoid bone, which forms from the fusion of many separate uh, sections of ancestral bones. So the sphenoid bone has contributions from all three parts of the skull, the splanchnocranium, chondrocranium, and dermatocranium, and many elements fuse to make the one single sphenoid bone in humans.